say hello to Traveler-san. Through the creative use of game mechanics, and at times glitches, we're on a quest to see just how much of Genshin Impact can be completed using only the Traveler. And we sometimes break things. If you enjoyed the series, do make sure to like and subscribe. It helps Traveler-san out a lot. Oh boy, the Aranyaka quest, the longest war quest series in the game, arguably the best too. It strongly reminds me of some other game, I'd imagine it's pretty evident which. Well, there's a ton to do, let's get into it. We have already, in the very first step of the introductory quest, a problem. Is that lady fighting the monsters? Hold on, we can't have that. Is it truly traveler only if some NPC is helping? Let's just not intervene. Someone who doesn't participate can't receive help, after all. Just gonna mine some ore. Oh, fruit, lovely. She's not done yet. I guess we're in for a long wait. Yep, don't mention it. Really, don't mention it. Ron is invincible, huh? Kinda crazy. Uh, why is he standing like that? Anyways, hustle Rana, hustle. You're darn right. I know I've said this before, but Starfell Sword makes every cutscene better. Feel free to count how many you see, because there will be a lot. And that, which totally isn't cheating, is how one wins a race, what? was pretty excited to get to this part of the quest to see how these stories would change with an account that hadn't done the Liyue or Inazuma Archon quests, because that's what these three stories you tell the kids are about. Except, they don't change, and the Traveler and Paimon tell them about events that have yet to transpire. Really strange, given the dialogue changes for the beginning with Rana if you haven't yet done part one of the Sumeru Archon quest. Guess maybe this was too much to rewrite? It's not a joke, Paimon. Let's fast forward a bit, to the part where Traveler-san murders Rana and takes the axe. No, no, don't rewind. You heard that correctly. Made a video on this, so won't go too far into detail. But the gist of it is that she stops fighting these spawn of crocodiles after a while, and we can't risk having her join in while cleaning up the rest. Just gonna push her into the water. <laughs> just. This is actually a lengthy process of walking against her that takes tens of minutes. It is time to say bye bye to Rana. Told you I'd be taking that axe. Of course, she responds after the spinal crocodiles are defeated. Still, fun little experiment. I see, making me let the fire when I don't have Pyro. She's out for revenge. You know, this quest really seems to let you bully Rana through the dialogue options. Oh, you want to try my cooking? The most abrupt no ever. Paimon keeps trying to cover for Traveler-san. He does not mince his words, Paimon. He says what he means, and means what he says. She looks so sad though. Maybe Traveler-san went a bit too far saying no like this. Yeah, this was surely going too far. Not that other thing though. Hey. 
Good morning, Rana. You can even sleep while sitting up, can you? Heh, <laughs> well Traveler-san can too, while also levitating like he's the Raiden Shogun. Back to work, for Rana anyways. She's got some Faturi to fight. This battle took ages. Eventually she pushed the Pyroslinger into a corner, and the three remained in this location. Speeding this up to, oh, I don't know, 5,000%? I left to watch TV during this part. Finally, the end of the intro. This last boss had enough of Rana's invincibility and kept pushing her until she was out of its aggro range so it could fully heal. But she eventually got it in round two. Once again, we say bye bye to Rana. I guess Traveler San's not very happy to see she's in there. Look at him, hugging the barrier. That's a bit creepy. Tis but a scratch. Now that Rana is sealed, the true quest begins. First, need to pick up the Vintage Liar. Sent Mitoboru, also known as Koseki Maru, over to do that for me. Next, need to play some tunes to open the Phantasmal Gate. You know, these trials kinda remind me of the Silent Realm trials from Skyward Sword. It's probably not intentional, but I just keep making connections with Zelda in this quest. Alright, that nearly wraps up this second quest. Just gotta play another tune? I got it this time for sure. Okay, the introductions of the quest are done. From helping R&R a cook, to helping them find lost music, pilot giant robots, fix a large water filtration and rainmaking system, and save the Morty Arena. There's a lot to do. Rather than walk through it all, I'm going to pick out the interesting bits. The experiments. The breaking of things. The puzzles or challenges that make one ponder, how is a traveler without Dendro supposed to do that? Ah, right. I should reiterate that. I cannot, will not, use Dendro Traveler, as discussed in the previous episode. That's this region's extra challenge. Because you know, limiting it to traveler only with no exceptions wasn't enough. Let's start with that cooking quest. There are three parts to this, but Arakatora's is the one that stands out. Up for a bit of a map breaking? Normally, to do this quest, one must drain the water. This reveals a teleport waypoint and also an underground cavern used later in the quest. But here on this channel, we like to go diving. So, let's bypass the switch by way of a very difficult out-of-bounds journey. Gotta go to the turkey lair to start. The exit is at the top of the area. If this is something you'd like to try yourself, and you're finding there's not quite enough info here for you, I recommend checking out my other video that covers it in detail. Anyways, from here it's a bit of a trek to the area in question. First up, nabbing this log and unlocking the waypoint above. It's unfortunately not as easy as just going up from here and traveling to the location, because the only way in is too close to the surface of the water. Instead, need to stay below the map and climb up this stretched terrain, all the way over to this rock that's near the surface. It's a bit difficult to explain where exactly this is, but it's east of the teleport waypoint just unlocked. Now, it's Starfell Sword time. This is tricky for a number of reasons. One, can't reset Starfell Sword if they all break, meaning it's back to the rock to start anew. Two, the reverse side of the terrain has back face culling, meaning it's not loaded in, and as such, has no collision. Carefully have to stand on the very edge, because one more step and Traveler Sign will be pulled to the other side of the terrain. 3. I don't have C6 Geo, so Starfell Sword only lasts 30 seconds. Okay, a checkpoint. 
Good. I gotta love portable waypoints. We're below the trail that leads to the underground area with the machines. There's something I really want to try here, but let's get that head mushroom first. And there it is, the withering zone and our mushroom. This guy can't use ranged attacks since we're underwater. The blast just instantly detonates. Oof, a lot of work for the mushroom and to bypass the water without draining. No real reason for it other than it's cool and because we can. Why is it cool? Let's go back to that portable waypoint, climb up into the tunnel, awaken our buddy the flying ruin drake and have him follow us up. Ever see one of these guys fall into water and get instantly destroyed? Yeah, me neither, because the camera went crazy to show that the switch had been unlocked. And with all that, the first Aranara has been recruited for Festival Ustava. Next on the list, the Rhythm Quests. Like the Cooks, there are three of them, all of which follow a pattern of learning a new tune, clearing a withering zone, and challenging a domain. A domain with a lovely dendro ring puzzles. Hmm, what an interesting camera trick. And they put an invisible wall here. Not a wall, but a cube. Whoa, camera's a bit weird up here. Getting dizzy. There are the songs, and there are the three withering zones cleared. Gloomy Paths, Withering Zone was notable for having to carry Dendrograna through the teleport gates, but otherwise, these were pretty straightforward. Also, as a quick call back to last episode, the quest dialogue did not trigger when I entered the tunnel for the rhythm that nurtures the sprout. Like Sakura cleansing rituals well, it's a one-time thing. Right, bring on the Dendro Rings. Starting with Gloomy Paths domain, we have a set of troublesome Dendro Rings. The first two are easily hit by climbing atop Starfell Sword, but for that last one, going to need a falling charged attack. Although I can set Starfell Sword, getting up there looks to be a problem. I had a few options, such as using Windcatcher, but that would limit my attempts to 5 before having to restart the domain. Running to the teleporter that takes one to the upper floor, to then glide over, took too long, and both Starfall Sword and the Dendro Grana durations would end before making the trek. This cluster leaf of cultivation though? Just the thing I needed. The perfect height to reach the Dendro Ring. Next, Sprout's Domain. Wait, really? Talk about an easy skip. Oh, never mind. Dialogue is playing, but the monsters aren't loading in. Newer domains and their progression checks are such drags. More Dendro Rings it is. Doesn't seem all that bad. Hit this one, then that one. Oh, that's rather close to the barrier but not quite close enough to prevent Starfall Sword. We're still in the clear. Another falling charge attack, and we are done. Ah, uh, that was three, wasn't it? Oh, come on. Here is how it's done. You'll need Windcatcher. First, Starfall Sword can reach that. By placing one in the water beneath, it can be stood on. Another Starfall Sword can be aimed up, and when it latches onto it, it'll do so in a way that doesn't require a falling charge attack. 
Timing has to be precise. The window of opportunity after placing Starfall Sword is 30 seconds, or 40 if C6 Geo. After setting Starfall Sword in the water, can use this algae as reference for optimal placement, run back and grab the Dendrograna. Stand atop Starfell Sword and aim up to set another on the Dendro Ring. Run south and climb atop these plants. Jump over to the vines, travel up them, and lastly, use Windcatcher to glide over to the Dendro Ring. Truthfully, I failed this on my first attempt, only having a few uses of Windcatcher on me. It led to me trying a alternate route. It's quite interesting. The idea was to set Starfall Sword as normal and grab the Dendrograna, but to then drown to get teleported into the boss arena. Because it's a teleport within the same map, the Dendrograna remains. Starfall Sword placements also remain, with one unfortunate exception. The one placed on the Dendro Ring breaks. You can see here that the one on the ground remains, while the one set on the Dendro Ring is gone. I have a theory on why this happens. I believe that, when the loading screen pops up, the game reloads certain actors on the map. One of those being the Dendro Rings. Since the object Starfall Sword was placed on momentarily vanishes, or perhaps even moves by going through its spawn cycle, the Geo Construct is destroyed. Well, whatever the case, it's finished, and so is the boss challenge. That's two down. I very much like the variety in these puzzles. I've had to use an assortment of tricks, gadgets, and mechanics to solve them, and this third one requires something new still. Because while I can reach the first two without much trouble by simply climbing via Starfell Sword, the third is a bit too far back to climb to before the Dendrograna duration ends. In order to reach it, gotta break out some of the tricks learned in episode 8, where we tackled Xingling's story domain without using elements. In other words, parkour. And with that, one more set of three quests is cross off the list. Everything really is in threes with Aranyaka. Another set of three quests. I'm going to butcher these pronunciations, probably, so do forgive me. Agnihotra Sutra, Varunagatha, Vimana Agama. We start with the giant robot one, Vimana Agama. I like it when they actually add in the details that are mentioned in dialogue. Standing here and listening closely, one can hear the muffled, echoey chant of an abyss mage below. Oh, so you're not good dealing with merchants? Let me tell you. I grew up playing a game called RuneScape, and made my billions in it through the art of mercantile. It taught me a lot, so no worries, I got this. Just hand over the money. And you know what else it taught me? Never hand your money over to others. Everyone's out to scam you. They cannot trim your armor. They will not double your money. Hmm, so where's the option for, I've never seen one of these books before? I mean, I don't want to lie, but I still don't have an adventurer handbook. Alright, time to get down to actual business. The main obstacle for Vimana Agama is, can you guess, Dendro Rings, although not just any. To reach them, the water in this cave must first be drained halfway, which is to say that there are two switches that drain the water. The water in this cave cannot be bypassed like in the cooking quest, due to the item we need not spawning until it's drained. So instead of keeping it undrained, we're going to test. What happens if we hit the second switch first? Just gotta get past this pesky barrier. And it actually could be easier if this spot right here didn't have an invisible wall in front of it. Though, all the same, it's not really all that difficult. Near the first switch is a hole in the wall. 
squeeze into it, climb around and do a bit of gliding outside the map. Boom, oh, we're in. Let's clear out the machines, because boy oh boy, is another pain in the rear the last thing we need with this terrible puzzle. Take a moment to study the image on screen. Do you see an issue? The dendro rings are too close to the dendro monuments. This would be a breeze if I didn't lock out the use of Dendro Traveler. But there is a way. Observation, patience, and a descent into frustration and baking on luck is exactly what that way is. Here's how it works. This puzzle runs on a timer, 50 seconds. Dendro Grana must be used to activate the Dendro Rings, which unlocks the monument, notably not the monument directly below it. Dendro Grana, when striking something, arcs upwards. Hitting the monument makes it arc up and hit the ring. How convenient. And also, how terrible. Because if that's happening, how in the world is it supposed to hit the monument? Now let's take this analysis one step farther. Hitting these monuments is akin to threading a needle. The dendrograna need to pass through an unbelievably small gap. Everything that may widen that gap must be used. Once activated, the rings move up and down in the air. To maximize the entry point, striking the monument when the ring reaches the lowest point and begins to move upwards is key. This alone is not sufficient. The angle at which the monument is hit also plays a part, given the slopes of the terrain. And finally, the most maddening of all and why I had no choice but to rely on a little luck is the dendrograna fire off at random trajectories. Whether they shoot from the left or right of the character is also random. This conclusion is based on findings from hitting the same monument from the same angle 10 times, something I guaranteed via the use of portable waypoint. The character always faces north upon loading in from one. Whatever logic determines the dendrograna trajectory seems impossible to fully control. Right, here's the successful clip. And finally, to hit the switch. This very well could break things. And I was hesitant, but pressing. Okay, so it didn't drain. The water straight up vanished. And uh oh, the quest didn't update. And the key piece didn't spawn in. That's not a good sign. Let's go hit that first switch. Hoping I didn't break it. Else the quest ends here. A reward on the road. Okay, whew, a little scare there. The remaining key pieces aren't any trouble. And with it completed, the giant robot activated and smashing to bits the sealed entrance, Traveler San's showdown with the boss is at hand, an Abyss Lecter. It becomes apparent rather quickly that these enemies are trouble. Their first form is whatever, but the moment that shield goes up, it's a slog of a battle in which I have no choice but to endlessly evade while waiting for Starfell Sword to recharge. The falling rocks cannot be iframed with sprints. Gotta clear the red zone. Uh, this is a bit unexpected. My dude, where are you going? Now he's up there. And this is terrible. I can no longer see the red zones and the rocks just appear right above the ground and instantly hurt me. Digging deep for this one, I got this. I got this, I don't got this at all. Maybe I wasn't meant to... Fine, round two it is. <gasps> really. Oh, no. oh, this is not... <sighs> Actually digging deep now? Smash! 
truth. Terra smash. I knew the power Wait. of revelation <laughs> and hope. Son. The power. Quick. Door is opened unto you. Now that was a long fight. If ever two or three of these guys pop up in a single battle, things might get very, very difficult. Definitely looking forward to it. With the super bad stuff cleared up in this part of the rainforest, we've reached a good place to pause the adventure for now. Cramming all of the game's longest quest series into one episode would probably have this video pushing 50 minutes, but I can at least leave you with this little spoiler. traveler Sign does indeed reach the end of the quest, and we'll be doing just that in the next episode, where we also, <laughs> naturally and of course, attempt to break the Marana boss fight. Thanks for tuning into the episode. As always, if you're enjoying the series, it's appreciated if you'd consider subscribing. Traveler San still has a ton of content to clear, so you can bet there will be plenty more. And if you'd like to keep up with sneak peeks, strange finds, and whatever else I feel like sharing, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Musashiden. This is Musashi and Traveler San, signing off. Till next time!